I wouldn't mind to find out that tomorrow never happen Cause if it does, it will never be the same I wouldn't mind to find out that tomorrow will never happen Cause if it just still means we have today So that was a song called Tomorrow by today's guest Lara and Tebby. Lara is someone I met on the Montreal open mic scene four years ago, and when I first heard her, as I'm going to tell her today, she really reminded me of Carol King and Carly Simon in a really striking way that I kept hearing, which is interesting, because a lot of popular music relies on the same instruments, the same chord structures, and yet nothing quite strikes me as being of that past era, the 60s and the 70s, that I like so much, and you wonder why, because the chords are more or less the same, the lyrical ideas are more or less the same, but there's something about Lara and Tebby's sound that actually brings that spark back of the 60s and 70s. So I hope after this interview you check out her music, but for now let's just check out the interesting things she has to say. Here I am with uh, Lara and Tebby, and uh, to start, I thought I'd say my, my first reaction when I heard your music uh, was noticing the resemblance to the sound of a, a Carol King or Carly Simon. And I first told myself that maybe that doesn't mean much. I just haven't heard enough piano playing singer songwriters. Uh, but I talked to another peer of ours, uh, Bruce Miller, and he said he heard it too. He also name dropped Lara Nero. And then uh, when I heard your 2018 album, uh, Here and Gone, I thought, okay, there's definitely something distinctly late 60s, early 70s about this. Do you, do you have any secrets to getting that sound? Uh, secrets to that. I guess just listening to a lot of that kind of music for a certain period, I find that um, whether you like it or not, the music that you listen to and that you absorb comes out in some way in what you make. So right. maybe that's what happened. <laughs> I also, I, I noticed uh, that I think there's something about your phrasing. Uh, so there are a couple songs. Uh, so uh, Fake It and uh, Voodoo Doll, uh, it's the album. Uh, I think you've had two albums since this one, uh, Skin Collection. It's good. People should listen to it. But any, I, I found you were very, uh, you'd have these choruses that didn't necessarily have any word, but you'd clearly thought a lot about the phrasing. You get a lot of melody out of a, a few words, like voodoo doll or whatever. Uh, is that something you work on? Work on. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think the to me, the melody part is what comes naturally, I guess. Uh, I think as, at a young age, I was really into a lot of classical music. And so maybe that was like an early influence in terms of getting a melodic way of thinking into my head. Um, but that's, that's cool that you noticed that. I mean, I, right. <laughs> well, yeah, well, one of the standout things, uh, so you're, you're a multi-instrumentalist. So uh, at least there's a piano, guitar, saxophone and drums. Uh, you know, all, all of those are things that it takes time to learn. How, how did that come to be? Uh, well, I think the, well, the saxophone um, and the piano, I guess, and a bit of a guitar were some instruments that I had the chance to learn before I started writing my own songs. So having a little bit of a foundation with those was definitely helpful to kind of get started. The other instruments like drum and bass sort of came in the recording context where um, I wanted to just get some ideas down. Uh, I had the ideas in my head and I just wanted to yeah, be able to implement that myself like pretty quickly. Uh, and so that was, uh, it was more kind of like an on the job kind of learning. Um. Right, no, that's incredible. Like I, uh, there's this one open mic in Montreal, Brutopia, where they have a drum set and I'll do the most basic like jump, jump but yeah beyond that I, I don't know how anyone would you know learn it without substantial lessons so it's really cool uh so, so you you were talking about a, a classical 
foundation. So with the, with guitar, piano, saxophone, were, were any of those classically trained? And w- which experience do you prefer, the sort of self-teaching rock and roll approach or the, the strictly, uh, the very methodological classical approach to learning music? Definitely the rock and roll approach. <laughs> um, I get like, uh, I, when I was learning piano, it was definitely with a classical kind of structure. And it was not for me uh, in the sense that I would get these, you know, books of sheet music and I would never really be able to sight read it properly. I would just kind of like guess and then memorize it or play it, try and listen to the song and play it by ear. So I somehow like skirted around actually using the classical learning method (laughs) um, while enjoying the kind of classical music. So I, I think um, it's a lot of fun. I, I personally like kind of improvisation and, and learning by ear a lot more than like sheet music. I think there's a, a value to both, but definitely that's more of my kind of learning style. When I started coming across, you know, pop rock songs written in a minor, other minor keys, uh, I, I went back to playing Fur Elise on piano and I thought, man, it would have been so much easier if I just think of this as, you know, A minor, E, et cetera, et cetera, rather than just, you know, one note at a time. Uh, like it's it's level seven in the Royal Canadian Conservatory system. But yeah, I feel like if someone just taught me to be chord literate earlier, you know, maybe it's even faster. Uh, yeah. So because you play all these instruments, uh, are, are you using any digital instruments on your records at all? Or are you really trying to, you know, have everything be real and you're doing it all? Uh, I think that that's something that is changing. I've been writing some new songs this year. Um, so I, in the past, a lot of my, uh, I have used kind of digital drum machines in my first album on one song. Um, but otherwise, I was mostly doing kind of like live recorded instruments Um, but but at the same time I think in kind of future looking for the future I'm a little bit more open to different possibilities there's a lot of ways of going about kind of creating music and I'm starting to explore that so whether it's uh, just kind of logistics you know not wanting to make too much noise and so maybe like a digital drum machine is more handy or also I think um, something that's really important to me right now is being able to collaborate with other musicians, something uh, at the time when I was recording some of these other albums, uh, uh, kind of working alone was, it worked at the time for the, the situation that I was in then, but now I'm a lot more interested in kind of opening up to, to collaborations and having friends or other musicians uh, play different parts um, and having a more kind of this group group effort Right. So, so doing all the instruments, it wasn't a matter of principle. It just felt like the right thing to do at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's just, there's many ways to skin a cat. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just not do that literally. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I, there seemed to be a lot going on in, in your lyrics, but nothing, nothing obvious. They're either about day-to-day things or they're kind of cryptic. One thing I wanted to ask, I I notice you use other people's names uh, in your songs, so at least Jeannie and Emily are the two songs that come to mind. Uh, And I don't know, when I hear a name, it hooks me into the song. So so what's going on with that writing technique? Mm. Um, I think that the using names is is something I... um, in a way, I think a little bit of some artists like Kate Bush, who I really like, or some other artists who use these like characters or vignettes. Um, that's something I really enjoy in other people's music. And so um, I think especially in kind of like the earlier stuff I was writing, using like names, they, they weren't necessarily names. The names just sounded like uh, sonically, they had like a certain sound that kind of fit the, the song. Right. They didn't have any more meaning there, but uh, I think the whole like practice of using these like personas is a nice like visual tool um, to create this like character um, in people's imagination. Um, I think there's there's other ways of exploring that. Like I've tried um, also kind of putting yourself like the first person into another character, like saying I this or you this. Um, there's some songs that, that I've written that you know I'm not really talking for me, but rather from like an, an imagined other perspective. But I think there's, there's something kind of cool about 
having this name, this named entity. Right. Uh, do you ever take the risk of writing as someone else who who is saying things that you wouldn't say? So I, I was talking to my last guest, uh, Joshua C. Foam, and he wrote a a song from the perspective of Paris from the Iliad, uh, which is not necessarily a good perspective. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know. Have you ever thought of doing that? Hmm. I'm trying to think if I've done, if I've tried that or not. But that's uh, that's kind of interesting because it's. I mean, you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes and giving yourself permission to um, imagine what it would be like to to see things from another perspective. So in music or out of music, and that's a kind of uh, interesting experiment. Right. I, I think the most provocative lyric I heard on uh, the, the Skin Collection, uh, just finding it right now. Uh, so the song's called Take You There, and it opens up with a line about a place with gun control. Uh, I live <laughs> in Quebec, where I'm, I'm trying to have gun control. So what, what was the thinking with that? Um, yeah, this song actually was... I think maybe more, one of the more cryptic songs. It was like it was kind of born out of a free writing exercise. I wanted to see what would happen if I would just like do a free association, you know, writing um, nonstop and see what comes out. Uh, but what, what the gun control is there? Hmm. And it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's there was no like specific kind of political message or like specific reference with that. Uh, right, and so it's just like a coincidence a and that the, the American Nightmare song is also on that same. <laughs> that is up to the listener to draw the connections. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, this is, there's some interesting art on this one. For the next record, you went with planets and then the next one you went to sort of gray photo of a, a highway or, or something uh is is there much of a thought process that goes into these images or is it just they mm. look nice or where do these choices come from hmm uh i think that the, the 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 art to me is definitely important um it's something i mean most of the the art i've kind of done myself except for the last one was a friend's photo that that i'd asked if i can use right um but usually it's there's some thought in that like I do want it to sort of match either the feeling of the whole album or to kind of reference a certain song. Um, I think looking back on kind of reflecting back on all these albums, um, I think the album art also reflects kind of my state of mind at the time, um, which right. is kind of interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, I like, I think that the kind of the aesthetic of an album art is really important. It's something that draws people in uh, when, when you see it visually. And you can also kind of play with humor or play with uh, kind of connecting different ideas with the image and like the contents of, of this the album. Right. Do, you, do you think of an album as a unified project or is it just like you write 10 songs and say, okay, I'm gonna package them together? I think early in the early in the process for me, it, it's been um, like let's get enough songs uh, that I feel like it's ready to put together into an album. Um, but I think afterwards, in retrospect, it's usually there is usually like a unified kind of concept to it. Whether it's just that these were all written in a certain time period, um, even if that's just the only unifying idea, that's still kind of cohesive. Right. Yeah, and, and that's how I, I tell it to myself in my head. You know, it's they're all they're all connected to me mm. yeah, even if they're not to the outside world and sometimes i find when i've been listening to professional albums it feels half the songs on there are forced because they want to have a concept even though all they've really focused on is a few hits uh speaking of which uh so i, I had a friend karen on the show a couple weeks ago and i was half joking about the idea that she has one song she plays more than others that people who know to her, go to her shows know called heartbreaker uh, do you have, or have you picked for the day when you really make it, what your signature song is, what your hit is? Uh, I guess it depends when. Um, I think one of them's definitely been Genie. Right. Uh, I played a lot. I guess more recently, um, another song that I wrote, Sunshine. I played that one a lot as a guitar mm -hmm. song. Yeah. I guess those two are the main ones that kind of pulled out, either because they're maybe for me easier to play. <laughs> and also, you know, I like those songs. Yeah. 
So outside of music, I, I see you, you were recently credited as a co-author on some kind of psych paper. Uh, did you get into that hobby a little bit? Uh, the hobby of, of <laughs> science of music. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's something I've been spending more time doing. Um, what's kind of cool is, you know, there's always like a connection both ways. I find my kind of work in that sort of field uh, definitely inspires my music and in a way vice versa too. Um, like I've used some uh, skills in videography and sound to do some, some work uh, in research. And, you know, some research topics have been kind of inspiration for, for music as well. Have you ever been in a situation where you write a, a line and then you're like, no, that doesn't hold up to what the peer reviews say about the human condition? <laughs> um, interesting, interesting question. I don't know if, I think, I think they're separate. They're second, separate mediums. Right. So I think I'm allowed to sing about whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I'm always going to ask people that question, even though mm. I know 90% of the time they're going to say it's separate because I'm just waiting for that one person who says, no, <laughs> I have a very specific goal with my songs and it's teaching the world about this other <laughs> kind of knowledge I have. But that's that's more than fair enough. All mm. right, well, uh, Lara, thank you for joining me. Uh, do you have a song you want to share with us? Uh, yes, I do. And actually, this is one... Um, that was inspired by kind of the research world. Mm. Um, so this one is from my last album, it's called The Game. And it was, is sort of a reflection on um, the, the kind of community of pickup artists and the seduction community, uh. which was a topic of research um, that I ended up reading a lot about. So yeah. yes, I see that facial reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll play that here. Good figure. <laughs> Oh, I'll actually fix the sound here. One second. Really <clears throat> Just trying to get laid. It's like my soul's been shattered. Every piece given away. It doesn't matter what you're after. They call it a game because all of us want a little bit more, just a little bit closer to home. Wandering far and wide from where we belong, just a little. Thank you.
we all have me it's like being your own master living in your own way it doesn't matter what you're after it's you that has changed because all of us want a little bit more just a little bit closer to home wandering far and wide from where we belong just a little bit closer Very nice. Well, Lara, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you. So that was today's guest, Lara and Tebby. And I have to say, I love the fact that she was kind of in denial about the connection between her research work and her musical work. But then lo and behold, she goes and sings this interesting song from the perspective of some of her not always canny research subjects. So that was a fun experience for me. I hope it was for you. Please check out more of my videos in the future. I'm Zach Morgenstern for Ludwig von B. See you next time.